Remember, I call myself the good enough gourmet, okay? And why do I say that? It's because I'm gonna show you how with basically 50% of the effort, you can get 90% of the bang in this cooking. I'm not gonna go to do the 100% of the effort, because it's not when you go it. clamming on Hatteras Island, you're trying to catch kind of a smaller one to a medium one. When they get bigger and bigger than this, they're kind of more toward chowder clams because they get tough. So what yeah. people do that want to catch a clam on Hatteras Island, they go to the sound side. And there really aren't many clams up here. They're more toward Hatteras and Ocracoke, okay? If you clam up here, you're going to be very frustrated. If you clam on Ocracoke, you could be a happy camper down there. Now, you don't what even this need a boat. clam chowder is right here is a very rustic clam chowder, okay? It's a Hatteras style. Remember, when the people were here in the old days, they didn't have a cornucopia of vegetables and all. So all this is is potatoes, onions, and clams, and the clam broth. It does have a little bit, if you're a vegetarian, it does have a little bit of the bacon grease in there, okay? The fat back, and that gives it a little bit of taste. What I do to open them up, because I'm a lazy guy for the big chowder clams, I throw them in my freezer overnight, and they freeze hard as a rock. And the next day, I let them defrost, and they open right up, and then I can cook, cook them and cut them right up and make them into clam chowder. That's the lazy man's the way. The fact it. to know is that if you really want to find out what it costs to have a shrimp tail, if you're buying them with the heads off, you multiply it by 160. So when I paid 750 for these heads on shrimp, basically I was paying $12 a pound for heads off shrimp. But we're going to use the Outer Banks meat, seafood, shrimp, poultry rub. This is good on everything. You can buy it. I don't get any money from this. This is Island Spice and Wine right here. This is good stuff. Buddy, I'm going to give you one when you leave. Now, okay. the main thing about a shrimp is that it's got a built-in thermometer in there. Okay? That shrimp is nice and limp like that. No matter how you cook it, when he's done, he's going to turn in a circle. Okay? It's going to turn into a Cheerio, kind of in a circle. If you keep him in there any longer, he's going to be overdone. Now, when you take these shrimp and you throw them in this really hot pan, they're going to turn into that circle pretty quick. So what you really want to do is also make sure they turns from this translucent color into that white pink color till it's done. You might have to flip them over. You might have to do something like that. But you don't want to. And Millie's uh, crab cake is the one that I like the best. What's the secret with it? I think is the recipe that calls for white bread, okay? I like toasted, cheap, white wonder bread, okay? Now, if the boss is coming over, I don't use much bread. I use mostly crab. If I got a lot of people coming over that I really don't like, I'm loading the bread in there to kind of get the, you know. One of the but, signs of having a really good crab cake to me is one that falls apart. If you start making these crab cakes, and when you start picking them up and moving them around, if they don't fall apart, that means you're, you're tightening them up like a snowball too much. I want my crab cake to be really loose. 